right? I am really excited to bring you this lesson. It's gonna be very quick, but I think it's gonna be very heavy hitting. If you um, are in a band or you like writing songs and you sometimes get, you know, writer's block, I found an amazing uh, way to kind of like destroy that writer's block and write riffs that start writing the song for you. Uh, all the songs in the intro uh, of this video have something in common and I'm gonna show it to you and hopefully it's gonna take your riff writing into songwriting abilities and just, you know, uh, skyrocket them. All right, so, so I'm going to make this quick. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I saw a quick clip of uh, Metallica. I think it was being interviewed by, by Howard Stern, I think. And um, Lars had said something in passing like, oh, that's the three to one thing I was talking about. And I really did not think about it at all until last night in, in my sleep. Again, this, I, I have a video where uh, about Pink Floyd, David Gilmore popping up here about it came to me in a dream. This came to me in a dream, and and uh, Lars was doing a three to one thing, and I was like, why why am I dreaming this? And uh, in my mind, I was like, what what is that three to one thing he was talking about? And he was talking about the riff to Enter Sandman. So I'm gonna turn my distortion, and plain and simple, what he was talking about was these three riffs that are identical followed by one thing that makes it different and uh, you can hear it in this riff like one mess up two three so right there there's three the same thing that and then followed by the fourth time round all right and so I was like oh that's cool and then my mind started going Wait, is that in other songs? You know, is it just Metallica? Because I know Metallica has some songs that have that intro. Also, the, uh, the band Ghost, if you like the band Ghost, they have that Metallica feel and they have something similar going on. And then I started thinking about songs and um, just like an intro, listen to listen to Sweet Home Battle. Let's see if we can see this pattern. Okay, how about some volume? Okay. <laughs> The same thing of writing something three times, maybe a little variation into something different. So here we have this D chord, and you know you pluck the open D string, followed by these arpeggios, and then we hit the C. But here's that same riff, and then here, oh, sorry, uh, sorry, here's the same kind of riff, and then here's the G. There it is, followed by a riff that's different. And so here's a three, one, two, three, riff. One, two, three, riff. Really quickly, I forgot to mention, um, at the end of this video, uh, I'm going to be doing a little plug for um, some holiday gifts uh, for uh, jam band fans. <laughs> and so uh, if you want to uh, see that, you can go to the end of the video. I'll talk about it. The clue is uh, right here on that shelf. There's a little clue. Anyway, uh, back to the original video. Right, and I was like, "Oh, that's interesting." And that's that's a different type of take on it, right? And then uh, my Sharona, you heard it in the beginning. There it is. Check this out: one, two, three. There it is, and the other one I did uh, was Blister in the Sun, which has one, two, three. One, two, three. All right, so my mind was like, oh my gosh, like that is such an easy formula to help write riffs. And you can do this with anything. And I'm gonna do it in front of you and I'm gonna show you that if, if you wanna write songs. Oh, uh, I was just thinking, um, um, Welcome to the Jungle by uh, Guns N' Roses has it, right? Like, uh, one, two, three, four, never figured that line out. but. That was a three and a one. And these are riffs that start off songs that are very heavy and that have like lots of momentum. And the, and you can pretty much start writing the song from that point if you can get one of these. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm, I'm gonna do something very, very simple. Um, I'm gonna take these two notes, you know, and show you like, that, that's one thing. All you gotta do is commit. And you can do this in any style. Um, here's one, two, three, and they have to have the fourth one. And it's like, well, what am I gonna do here? And and you can, this is the cool part, is you don't have to use music, music theory. This is where music theory doesn't really write the songs for you. It's about the feel of it um, and what you can imagine. So one, we're starting to 
pretty simple. <laughs> That took me a lot longer to figure out in my head what I was hearing. Uh, not proud of that moment, but you know, we, we, we have a riff that has three things in the beginning. And now the song. That's a D, bring in a D chord. Put the vocals. using theory and all of a sudden you write that riff and and you can start hearing what what comes out of your, your mind uh, I'll do it again here I'll do it again you can do this for any genre you can pick with pentatonics like let's just try it I'm doing this live in front of you like if you can pick three riffs and the three riffs can have some variation but they need to be very very similar and and then put a fourth thing behind it all of a sudden it's like it's like pulling like the lawnmower cable, like it starts up this songwriting event, at least in my mind, where you can start hearing what comes next, the chords and even choruses, um, because you have this really stable riff. So let me take an E minor pentatonic. This is gonna be hard because there's a million songs that have this, but let's see if I can come up with something live in front of you. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, no, that's like beat it sounding. Um, let's see. Uh, no, let's see, hold on. Uh, now you're probably saying to yourself, like, whoa, you didn't change on the third one. Well, you kind of did. Like, I'll explain. Um, you have this one. Itself. I hope this is making sense, but you can see you can do it. I'm going to do it one more time with something clean. Um, I'm not going to lie to you, I had this one in the bag, J just this, what I'm about to show you. I was just taking an arpeggio, uh, a C-shaped arpeggio uh, of an A chord, and I kind of did this. I just did that, I said, okay, let me see if I can turn that into a three to one, uh, three to one riff. And so I sat with... three of them and then I heard and, I, and that was me hearing it that's pretty much part of a, a G chord and then part of a D chord and so I had this riff like I was like, oh, I like it. But now what I haven't done is, let's see, I, that's my, my Sharona, uh loop. Okay, um, one thing I didn't do, 
let's put the chords to it. So I have an A chord uh, three times, and then a G, like da, 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 da. So uh, I want to hear the chords behind it, and so let's see, hold on. Now you can give that line to a piano part, it sounds like more like a piano, but here's the thing, is this statement by Lars from Metallica crept in my head and it kind of like grew. And the idea is you can take any idea, any, any scale, any chord structure that you're studying, right? Anything that you're studying and you can um, create these three to one riffs that really start to jumpstart your songwriting. Okay, like really start to jumpstart like everything that comes after it. it. It just feels good. So if you have a mental block, um, if you like, you know, rock riffs, this, this can be anything rock. It, you, you can do it with jazz. You can do it with, you know, like elevator, elevator music like I just did. Um, but you really can jumpstart yourself by picking something, committing to it three times. It can have some variation and then hearing what that fourth thing is to bring it back around and you have your starting of your riff. Really simple lesson. I, again, I want to sit and talk about it forever. On my, on my Patreon practice sessions, we're going to be uh, using those different ideas, using different scales, using different chord progressions, pieces of cage uh, to write riffs and to show you that this is really like endless and unlimited um, to what you can think of. Um, and also, really quickly, I want to point out a couple things. This, this is the end of the video. Um, I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, I was at a fish concert in Saratoga Springs, New York um, in, uh, in August, and I was in the parking lot, and I met this guy who, uh, who knew who I was and uh, gave me um, uh, a gift. And the gift was probably uh, the most, like, amazing gift I've ever gotten, and I'm showing it to you because uh, the holidays are coming, and if you have any Grateful Dead or fish fans in your uh, video, uh, in your family or friends, uh, this is a good gift. I don't know if you can see, but right here, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna, i do a close up, but right here I have a Lego Trey Anastasio. Uh, right here I have a Lego um, <laughs> uh, Jerry Garcia. Let's see, uh, on top shelf I do have a Lego uh, John Fishman. Let's see if I creep over here and there's a uh, Lego Mike Gordon of fish. And I love these things. I love them, I think they're the coolest things ever. Uh, they're available at uh, Grateful Egos on Etsy. I'll put every all the information up here. So if you do like that stuff and you want to get these for someone, these are really cool. They really made my day. Uh, the guy's name is Jeremy, one of the nicest guys I've ever met. Uh, we sat and talked, and so thank you, Jeremy. This is this is a video just just to promote his stuff. He, he didn't pay me. I love it. So I'm just showing you uh, grateful egos with uh, the Legos of uh of fish and the Grateful Dead are just awesome. I love them. I'll stop talking. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, go write some three-in-one riffs. Very, very simple video. I will stop talking. Bye-bye.